set in fucking two days. And That's cool. Thanks went, to him. Went crazy, dude. I was we looking just, at him the whole time. We Help fucking, me! But he's, he's great. He's doing great, man. Yeah. We got the drummer here that's learning everything so quickly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, you fuck. <laughs> fucking Chad, you bastard. Making us work this hard. John will serve you back in Nova Scotia. How I look that? the same as I did, I think, a couple years yes, ago. Yes, you did. <laughs> I got the Botox and shit, it's working. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I got my lips done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, since we uh, last talked, there's been some um, Ozzy Osbourne reissues with Randy Rose. Yeah. What do you think of that? It's fucking killer. That we dude. get to see. Finally, get to see some different stuff. Because yeah. cause we've had the same stuff forever. Because yeah. that's all that we could get our hands on. But it's great to have some some new stuff and different pictures and just uh, just other things. All the things you see now, it's just fucking great. It's great. Man. What do you think when you seen that video? You know, uh, at least the one that we're seeing far away. Uh huh. You know, it's still they're focusing on Rudy Sars all the yeah, time. Yeah, you know? it's you know. At least we're getting something. At least I, I am just shocked that they really didn't film that whole concert for you know from beginning to end at least once just there on their own yeah. you know what i mean because why wouldn't you all that production i'm surprised they didn't film it you know like you know every night you know yeah. but you know but thank god we have that now you know and, and then we got that good footage on the side uh-huh yeah we, we get to see a little bit of randy a little bit and uh, i think that's like a template of something you know we yeah get to see that in his two, his two songs but right. it's still great exactly you know what it's two more than we had that's true. You know, everything else on, on there is just stuff that, you know, more for us, so it was great, man. So uh, tell me a little bit about the Deep Purple project you guys uh, Um Yeah, we did uh, we did that that one song, uh, Pictures of Home, for uh, for Deep Purple, that, that uh, album. And then, uh, yeah, we did it at the Vatican again at Zach's studio, you know, and I got to co-produce it and mix that one as well. And uh, yeah. psyched, man, it came out cool, man. We did our own thing with it. Because mm. the original's so killer. I mean, why are you going to try to remake that? when it was done originally so amazingly. You can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you just gotta take it and make, make it your own, you know what I mean? So that's what we did. And you guys made it on the album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got Metallica. Yeah, I know. Label society. That's pretty cool, man. You know, um, That's definitely pretty cool. I haven't even gotten a copy of it yet. No? no I'll so. show you in a minute. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice, I'd like to see it, that's cool. I can't believe it. You've yeah. not seen it yet. No, I don't, right. I don't ever see nothing. I'm the last to see anything. So anything new you're producing uh, outside uh, of Black Label Society, just, uh, what are you working on? My own band with Cycle of Pain, I'm still writing new stuff, trying to get another deal, you know, so we can keep that band alive, and uh, just working out of my house, yeah. like, you know, some some uh, friends of mine, you know, have bands, they need stuff recorded, they come over and I'll produce their stuff for them. This band, The Infinite Staircase, I was working with them before I left, did a couple of cover songs, you know, so it's pretty interesting because they picked like a Bjork song and Michael Jackson tune. So, and we did it acoustically, which was crazy, you know, I mean, it came out pretty cool, so I'm pretty psyched with that. Just doing other sessions and stuff, I'm going to be working with, um, you know, other guitar players and stuff in my area. Right. You know, uh, Steven Ross, he's some, uh, he's a really good guitar player, you know, he's like a, like kind of like Vinnie Moore kind of style, you know what I mean, like, you know, instrumental stuff, and I'm going to be doing his record coming up soon, and then uh, just trying to do as much as I can, man, you know what I mean? So showing that John DeServio is uh, getting more into producing. Without a doubt, man. I do what I want to do. I love that. I love being in my studio, you know, and recording. And it's just so cre it's creative. It's so killer, you know. You really you have the you have the canvas there, and then I just put whatever you know I feel I need. You know, it needs, and it's really it's it's a lot of fun for me. I love that. Stuff. And playing bass, what are you learning to keep your chops up these days? Oh, I just you you know what I mean. I've, I've been playing. I play all the time still too, but when I'm home, I'm playing a lot of piano mostly, okay. or drums or something. You know what I mean? But uh, bass, I you know, I, yeah, I always play bass. You know, so I, you know, I don't really practice bass too much anymore, unless I'm working on something. Right. Like I was working on this this Jocko piece for uh, for Robert Trujillo. He's doing some Jocko documentary, and he's getting all his buddies to play like Jocko parts. People that influence that Jocko influence like me, and uh, so I worked on Portrait of Tracy for a while. You know, and that was a lot of fun, you know what I mean? Because I knew how hard that was to learn. So I was shedding that for a while, but um, just really playing, you know what I mean? Mostly playing piano and writing songs and, and, and guitar. And uh, I wrote some stuff on bass too when I was home, so. Always busy, man. When you take your whole catalog, you know, of songs that we've not heard yet, mm -hmm. I'm sure that's quite extensive. Very extensive. You know, as a great musician, so many it dude. Be tapes I, I, and tapes. I'll open up my uh, my computer and you'll see all the JD, you know, every, like, you know. 
probably over a hundred of and some songs that people you know that I've recorded whatever you know that I probably left at the time and now I'm like oh it was whatever you know but a lot of it's really good man it's pretty cool to go back and check it all out so maybe one day I'll get to actually you know release some of it you know that'd be great man. Something I've seen on the internet YouTube itself is uh -huh. um, your, your bass clinics you did yeah you know when it, yeah. it starts surfacing on YouTube yeah and yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's great work you're doing there. Oh, the thank you. The people, Thanks so much. I, I love it, you know, trying to inspire them, you know what I mean, and just you know, teach kids more and more about, you know, different styles of music other than Black Label, you know what I mean? Because Black Label's killer, you know what I mean? But we, we've been influenced by so many different artists, Zeppelin, Sabbath, Stones, you know, Beatles, uh, you know, just, the list goes on. And I love a lot of soul music and funk music. Being a bass player, jazz, funk, soul, I mean, that's that's a lot of good bass stuff, you know what I mean? In metal and rock, rock had some good bass stuff, but in metal, not too much. Steve Harris was, you know, right. cool. But in funk and jazz, I mean, there's a ton of great bass players, you know, so that's what I get into. And, I, and I, when I do my clinics, I try to teach the kids about that stuff. Because they see me slapping and stuff, then they're, they're like, they're interested. And they take it's heavy metal. Yeah, right, right, right. They think it could be a metal clinic, then they come and they're like, oh my God, what is he playing, you know what yeah. I mean? But it's cool, you know, because they, you know, they, it's, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, I don't get to do in Black Label, so I, I enjoy that a lot, man. It's fun. And it's teaching the people to yeah. become the best they are, you know, exactly. the just, best they can be. Exactly. Just yeah. keep trying, you know, and have passion for whatever you do, anything you do. you got to have passion for it, you right. know, otherwise you shouldn't be doing it. That's the bottom line, you know, so. And that's it, man. Just keep shit. Like, when I was a kid, I used to practice constantly, but it wasn't practice. It was... I wanted to. Right. It wasn't work, you know. I wanted to go do this and get better and better and better. So, you know, the end result is pretty cool because you put in all those hours and then you do get better at anything. You know, anything. If you do anything every day for an hour a day, you're gonna get good at it. Right. Whatever it is, you know, work out an hour every day. You're gonna get in shape. Yeah. You play. You know, do uh, any kind of language thing, whatever. An hour every day. Let's take work ethics of today yeah. to learning your instrument. Mm -hmm. People now have YouTube. I, they have so many shortcuts. Yeah, shortcuts compared it's, to a turning a turntable. Well, I'm backwards. 45, so yeah, I had a turntable, the whole thing, and for our era, I think well, that was that was the deal. But it made us the musicians we are. You know, if I would have had YouTube, drive. I would have had I would have just watched that. It would and that would have cut out all that work that I put in right. that really honed my ear. Right. And trained my ear more. That's what we have over these the new generation. Definitely, the ear. You know, you. I mean, we hear everything now because we spent so long, so many hours. You know, doing that. You know, so. And there was no tablature, so we no. learned things a yeah. certain way. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Way. Well, you know, it's great. The tabs are great. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're great, and they're not because if somebody puts them up and they're wrong, right. and then you're playing it wrong. Yeah. You know, but you didn't have to put the time in. But that's the thing. Put the time in. Then the result oh! So could it be in a hundred years from now, where will music be? You know, oh you know, heading, you know, where, oh where do you think it's going to go? I'm not talking about metal, I'm talking right, about right, music, music, music. Man, you know? Uh, you know, that's a good question. In a hundred years? Wow, I know, just think about a hundred years ago in like 1912, what the music was yeah. like, you know, Dixie, you know, it was like Dixieland stuff. Swing, you know, but uh, and, hmm, in a hundred years from now, I, I mean, you know, Maybe it'll be a Led Zeppelin revival. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who knows, man? Which actual Led Zeppelin member? Yeah, yeah, they'll pick them back up and freaking. Yeah. They'll, they'll be able to do that at that point. You know what I mean? So, yeah, who knows, man? It's, it's going to be interesting, I tell you that. I'm sure. What do you think of the internet and where it's going now? You know, because uh, when you look at promotions, there's no big labels pushing. Any, I know, man. The anymore. labels are gone, you know, that which sucks because, you know, the labels had the money that, that helped all these bands, you know, but now. Nowadays, it's easier to promote, but it's harder to really sustain anything, you know? Because there's so many bands, man. There's right. millions of bands. And now it's very easy for any of them to promote themselves. But the labels kind of went away, you know? So you got to have money on your own, and you can. If you have money on your own, you can do it, you know? But that's, a mo and that's what mostly everybody's going to now. Everybody's an independent label kind of thing, you know? So pretty crazy, man. But you got to adapt to the new technology and shit, you know? The business is so different now, so you gotta really adapt and get on with that shit. Where do you see touring going in the future? Touring will always be there, man, because that's like one of our last friggin' you know means. 
because they can't take touring away from us. Anybody could download my records for, for free. Price of gas, don't you? You know what I'm saying? Price of gas is going up, man. I know, especially for you. You're a few hours away. Yeah. But uh, touring will always be there because people want to go out and see, you know. Because, you know, you can go on YouTube, though, and watch anything you want. But there's nothing like going to see and stuff for real, you know. And how far are you guys going on this tour? Uh, all throughout Canada, the whole way across, man, all the way over to Vancouver. So it's gonna, it's gonna be fun. So you guys gonna see Crazy Madness again? Oh yeah, I think we will. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see them in Edmonton. I think they are, right? And Winnipeg. Oh, Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure we'll see them. Yeah, but I, I think I'm going to a clinic in uh, in Edmonton. I think okay. I'm doing a clinic there. I was supposed to do one in Vancouver, but I think it fell through. So I wanted to do one in Montreal. I want to do them everywhere because I love them. They're fun, you know, but. I could only do what they couldn't set up for me, you know, so. Excellent stuff. Any more words for our uh, future musicians out there? Oh, man, just keep shedding and just go back, man. Mm -hmm. Like, whoever you love, if you love Zach, listen to listen to what he did. Actually, you know, listen to stuff better than what Zach did. Listen to <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, nah, but he loved Frank Marino, you know, and he loved Al Demiola. Montreal guy. Exactly. Yeah. Check those guys out. Check out Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, check out Randy. Eddie Van Halen, you know, all these greats. Check out John McLaughlin, you yeah. know what I mean? He's great. Freaking Al Demiola, Paco De Lucia, all these guys are amazing. You know, and go back and listen, like if you're a bass player, listen to, you know, if you if you like me or whatever, listen to what I listen to. I listen to Steve Harris, Geezer Butler. But then growing up, then I got into soul music and funk music and Jaco Pastorius and Jazz Cats and stuff, Ron Carter and uh, Dave Holland and all kinds of just bass players, Bootsy. You know what I mean? A lot of a lot of guys like that. Uh, you know, Larry Graham. You know, Lewis Johnson. All these these fun cats. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of fun for bass. But find you know just find who you like and then go back and check out what they liked, and then you'll you know you'll become closer to the result rather than just scratching the surface. Right. You know what I mean? And today the people can go and see classic concerts of these people that we've never seen. Yeah. You know, on YouTube. Without a doubt. Like uh, years ago in America, there was a show called The Midnight Special. Right. And it was in the 70s, and uh, Wolfman Jack hosted it. Get down with the Wolfman! He was the greatest. Yeah. And uh, they had great bands on there, and they were live, and they sounded tremendous. I mean, all the bands back then just sounded good, because they were all really good musicians. They play their instruments and sing. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Nowadays, anybody can do anything in the studio nowadays, you know, because... If you go from the street and put him in a yeah, microphone, whatever. yeah, exactly, and I could tune him or whatever, and I could take his phrasing and make it funky. You know what I mean? I could do whatever I want. But I could play drums down on records because you know I'll take a, a, I'll play a part for 20 minutes and find a good spot. There it is. Loop that, and then there you go. And my drums sound amazing. You know what I mean? So it's a lot easier nowadays. A lot more trickery. Back then, it was way more real. That's all yeah. I gotta say. Yeah. And good producers. Yeah, oh, good everything. Musicians, songwriters, you know, everything wasn't a formula. It was from the heart and whatever, man. And anything went. Think of all the bands that were massive back then, and they were all different. They were all the Doors. Nobody sounds like the Doors. The Stones, Zeppelin, Sabbath, ELO, whoever, ELP, Rush, uh, you know, Bad Company, Steve Miller. I mean, and then in the Maiden, you know, and then when the metal really hit in like in 80. You know, made in Priest, before that Priest was around, Old Scorpions. I mean, there was just so much great stuff, but it all sounded different, man. you know what I mean? Nowadays, you got all these bands, and now these record people wanted them to, to be a certain sound, you know, and they didn't let them be themselves and, and have longevity, you know? It was just like, all right, we'll put this out. If it, if it does good, we'll go with it. If not, it's finished, yeah. which sucks, you know what I mean? Let's promote you for a little while. And, and that's it. If, if nothing yeah. happens, then uh, that's it. You know, you had your shot, and that's it. So that kind of sucks. You know, but what are you gonna do? That's the industry. That's it, the industry. That's the universe working for them. Without a doubt, man, <laughs> it really is. But that's about it, man. Everybody just keep fucking rocking and uh, keep shedding, keep listening, man. Excellent stuff. God bless, Randy. Randy Rose. That's our it, man. Dude. That's it, man. I'll see you soon, brother. Hey, man. Good thank, one. Thank you again.